So in next 15 minutes, we will just talk about what are the recent modalities in the treatment of BPHM with some background. And I would like to thank IAP Neurotology and Ranchi branch for inviting us over here. So why do you think that we need all these new modalities to treat BPHM? Anybody can say, like, why we are doing this? Why we are just trying for new, new, new interventions? Anyone? What is the motto of neonatology nowadays? It's intact survival, isn't it? Intact survival is the motto. So, the recent advances of PPHN is also like if you give nitric oxide, these children they will attain the milestones early. So this is how they are going to attain their milestones early. <clears throat> Yesterday night only I realized the language is very important, the voice. I received a phone call from my fellow regarding a transfer of a baby. I couldn't speak. In the end he got irritated and told, Sir, a message kar denge, please. So similarly in writing also, the things are very important if you write properly. That example I will just show afterwards. So who thinks nitroxide is a wonder drug? Please raise your hands. Anyone thinks nitroxide is a wonder drug? Okay. How many among us are using high frequency nitroxide? Please raise your hands. Okay, quite a few. Good. Do you think that surfactant is good for treating resistant MES and BPHN? How many are using? Do you rate surfactant over nitric oxide? Okay, who thinks only nitric oxide is good? Who thinks surfactant is better than nitric oxide? Surfactant better than nitric oxide? Nitric oxide better than surfactant? Okay, great. So as I was telling you while writing also, it's very important what we write and what we understand. This is an example. There was an English woman, she was coming from England to India to stay in Bihar. So as her accommodation was booked in the this thing, guest house, which was owned by that schoolmaster. So she wrote a letter to schoolmaster in Bihar. Her stay was booked there. She was worried about the toilet. And there in England they used WC as toilet, water closet. So she wrote that as the schoolmaster was not fluent in English, he asked the local priest about the letter and meaning of WC. What they concluded that WC means Wayside Church. So the schoolmaster wrote, Dear Madam, I take great pleasure in informing you that WC is located 9 miles from house. It is located in the middle of a group of pine trees and surrounded by lovely grounds. It is capable of holding 229 people and is open on Sundays and Thursdays. As there are many people expected in summer months, I suggest to arrive early and there is plenty of standing room. My wife is ill recently, so was unable to go. It has been a year since she last visited, which pains her greatly. I look forward to escorting you there myself and setting you in a place where you can be seen by all. What do you think will be the reaction of that lady? Anyone? A loud voice. What she should have done? <laughs> yes, exactly. First she painted that she never came to India. So that's how important what you speak and write also. Okay, let's start with the scenario. So this is let it be an interactive session. You please take part in this. This is a term infant born by mortal genital with thin amacin, vigorous at birth, abgars were good. At one hour, nurse noted that the baby is dusky and very rapidly breathing. SPO2's in room air over 55, temperature was fine, CRT was a bit prolonged, mean pressure non visible 36, respiratory rate was 60, faint murmur and moderate retractions. Then, after giving the oxygen, the pre ductal was 69 and post ductal was 50%. Everybody is clear about the case? Okay. This was the accent. Baby was intubated, put out conventional indicator, PIP. PIP of 26, 24 by 6.
And which protein is the sickest among all these? A, B, C, D. A. Anybody differs from A? B. But the answer is right. A is important. Uh, sickest because you have shunting from right to left to leave your right ventricle. Here the, all the shunts are closed. So your R, RB and RA right side will go into failure and baby will collapse. So the A is the sickest among all this. this. These are the things we should be looking when we are doing the echo or getting an echo done. Stand on the head of the cardiologist and ask these things to me. Our traditional teaching is to keep the SPO2s between 99 to 100%, PO2s above 80%, and hyperventilate, <coughs> hyperventilate these babies to make the pH alkalotic, CO2 wash out, give soda bicarb to achieve alkalosis, give dopamine or adrenaline to achieve supracystic blood pressure. Isn't it? These are the traditional teachings. Do we do this? Do you think these are relevant? No, because these are not physiological. The physiological, what we have to attain? We have to decrease the right-sided pulmonary pressures so that the blood should go more on the lungs. More blood will go to the lung, more blood will come to the left side of the heart and the more LV will receive more blood and will be able to pump out more blood. This is what is our achievement is. So, we first thing we need to do is optimize the lung recruitment. You know, when I ask, which will you prefer, surfactant or nitro oxide? So, if I am using both, the best approach would be give surfactant first. What it will do? It will recruit your lung better. Once your lungs are recruited better and still you are needing higher oxygen or your OIs are high, you start on nitric oxide. Other way around doesn't work. Your nitric oxide does not work well if your lungs are not recruited. So, you have to recruit your lungs first and then use other advanced parameters or advanced modalities of treatment. Yes, it, it will be. Yeah. So again, even if you are black, black means it's a primary BPH. And white means like something like MAS. Both the cases, the only thing is, in black one, the vessels, they have already been changed their morphology. So they are more resistant to the treatment. But even your black one, you need to recruit them. So, and the secondary surfactant efficiency will be there. So, if you want to give surfactant, in that also you can give if your OIs are pretty high, more than 20 or so. And sometimes people they start nitric oxide, they wait, it doesn't work, they give surfactant then. If you feel the lungs are adequately recruited, you are pretty high on uh, high, uh, high frequency ventilator with high MAP. If your maps, you provide high maps, if your maps are 12 or more, if your requirement is more than 60 to maintain SPO2, OIs are more than 50, you think about changing from conventional to high frequency. You need to have measures to decrease your PVR and never hyperventilate. And then oxygen. Previously it was taught to us the pre-ductal and post-ductal achieve for 95 to 98. But now they say keep it in the normal range, 88 to 92. Pre-ductal are most important. Post-ductal should not be targeted. If your post-ductals are more than 75, your pH is more than 7.25, your lactates are normal, you don't know is normal, forget about post-ductal situations. Concentrate on pre-ductal. Why on pre-ductal? Why we are worried about pre-ductal? Brain profusion, yes. Why high oxygen if you keep? It's a, because you uh, get free radicals and hyposynthesis that are bad. So we should not target high oxygen situations. This is what I have just told. pre to 94. And then drugs. Impaired RV contractility as I have told, decreased blood to the lung and decreased blood goes out from the LV. 
Which anatomy you start first in DPHM? Pink, yellow, green. Yellow, pink. Which one? Green. Yellow or green? Green. Green. Moving on. So the we should be cautious in starting with non because if your diastolic pressures are less than 20 or 22 in newborns, this will further decrease and it will hamper your CPP, cardiac perfusion pressure. So that's why we should be worried about using melanon in those babies. <coughs> Target normal systolic and diastolic blood pressures, ensure adequate cardiac output like urine output, pH and lactate. Debutamine is a preferable for newborns with hypotension and sign of low cardiac outputs. So that will be my first choice. In cardiac outputs decrease in presence of PPHN. Other inotrope, cardiotropic drugs we have is migrinone, dubutamine as an inodilator, vasopressors, dopamine, epinephrine, vasopressin, norepinephrine. These are the few things. When we select dopamine, dubutamine, adrenaline, on higher doses, they increase the heart rate and oxygen demand of cardiac. Dopamine and adrenaline in higher doses increase PVR, so it should be discouraged. Dubutamine causes petrol dioxide, so it has to be balanced act, and it goes hand in hand by doing the functional echoes. <coughs> Hydrocortisone may be used if you need higher doses of these. Avoid using combination of drugs with similar effect like adrenaline, dopamine, mineral, dubutamine, vasopressin, and adrenaline. You start the other, try once your baby stabilized, try to wean off the other one. The previous one. This was a baby 38 weeker, was bad, having severe birth asphyxia initially at birth. Started on 7 hours after an echo on high nitric oxide. And you see, as soon as the nitric oxide started, the pH changed, MAP decreased, OI from 34 degrees to 3.6. So nitric oxide worked very well. And this baby was discharged by day 8 of life and was off hydrator within 2 days and off hydrotropes within 12 hours. So treatment nitroxide we think is the gold standard, yes, but there are issues. It works through cyclic GMP. These are the different pathways from where the different drugs then. Nowadays, people are considering more on melanon, mostracyclines, percentan, vasopressin, and adenosine. Nitroxide has shown decrease the rate of death and ECMO, but and see just by standard management of oxygenation, ventilation, sedation, paralysis, inotropic spore, fluid and electrolyte, invasion, 69, 70 percent can be managed. The rest addition is 22 percent by nitroxide. This is Western data, Indian data. Only 9 percent are left in which the nitroxide in these standard measures does not work, and others one are percentan, prostacycline, and all. They have death rate of 4%. Our data in my unit we have done in the last 4 years, 420 babies. Our mortality is 12%. It is around 8% more. But the major cause was clepsilar sepsis. Their response to nitric oxide was same what they had. So we have only the additional problem of sepsis in, in India along with this. But 30 to 40 percent are not responders to nitric oxide. Less than 34 d does not been established role of nitric oxide and the in ELWs increased rates of IVH and all of those things discouraged us in those babies. That's why we need additional drugs to treat PPHN. And that may be magnesium sulfate. Now it is not being used much. Postracycline, sodium nitroside, phenyl benzoin. Melvinone is being established but not very strong evidence. There are few publications from our group. But it has shown to decrease need of MAP, increase PO2 and decrease the lactates. Vasopressin, now we use, we prefer vasopressin over adrenaline. It, because it, in physiological dosage it causes pulmonary vasodilatation and systemic vasoconstriction. Percentan is still is being understudied that people have been using it. Adenosine is another drug which people have been using in resistant CDH, the United Diaphragmatic Hernia Babies. Maxel, very nice study, it has shown if you start nitroxide, if it is resistant, add Maxel, the mortality decreases. But if you start Maxel first, add on nitroxide, mortality increases. So that should be the last resort if you want to use also. Questions before treatment is first, how severe is the PTHM you have to quantify? That is to be done by functional echo. 
What action is to be taken is you have to ask the cardiologist all these things. How is RA, RB, IDS movement, ERZ, pulmonary artery flow, PDA, it is open or closed, and where, where it is shunting. This is how you can classify with OI hyperoxia test and based on it. So, this is a kind of clinical and echo classification. How you can classify mild models here, BPHN. And then you can treat with conventional high frequency nitrogen side as for the clinical and see the response on functional echo. Large two slides. So, this is a protocol can be confirmed diagnosis of BPHN, correct underlying metabolic abnormalities. Ventilate conservatively, PO2 which remains less than 50 after that and preductal is less than 88. You can either switch over to high frequency nitric oxide, start centenafil dendrinone, give surfactant before nitric oxide and the end in the end is ECMO. You can see the uh, sending to the PDA and decide which way you want to treat these babies. So take home messages, do functional echo, classify your TPHN and treat as per the physiology. Don't go for the high, uh, uh, bringing the afternoon high, high blood pressures or alkalotically washing out the CO2. Adequate ventilation. And then think about adjunct therapies like Milton and Sildenafil and maintain blood pressures in the night. So this is, this was a baby, came with a BPHN, we started with the ventilator. So we thought he is going to do well on conventional ventilator. So we started the ventilator, was doing fine, then again has an hypoxia. We started with the dubutamine. We thought now dubutamine and ventilation will be suffice. Again he had, we had to go up on FIO2, we had on crestopressin. And then he had a very bad collapse. So we shifted on nitro and high frequency. We thought this is the last resort, done. This baby is going to survive. Now we added on the, we gave surfactant also. Everything was going fine. We got cardiologist again, review our echoes and everything. Everything was going fine. See the cardiologist has come. He was ready to go home. Again he had a shock. And instead of going home, he just went somewhere else. So that doesn't mean if you have everything in the world, you can save the child, there will be modality and modality and we have to accept that. Thank you very much.